So today I'm gonna to show you guys how I designed and built my articulating mic stand. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, welcome back to True Sound Studios. I'm Wiesna and today I get to show you how I made this really cool mic stand that articulates and kind of bends in and out of the way. It also makes it super easy to adjust to different vocalists and just personally I think is better than using a mic stand just because of the simple fact that it doesn't take up any floor space. So just a few things to really think about when you're building this. Don't use like screws that aren't very strong like drywall screws you definitely want to use some really strong construction screws these are screws that are gonna really hold up to the amount of weight that you're gonna actually be putting on this now it's not like the microphone and the hardware is that much weight itself but because of the shearing motion of how it's pulling it wants to pull itself off the wall you just want to definitely make sure you use some good strong hardware and lastly i'm showing you guys how i built my version of this so please just know that i'm i'm not taking responsibility if you don't build this up to you know the strength that i did and your mic falls on the ground it's got to remember you're putting a, a very sensitive condenser microphone in most cases on a wall and if this thing does drop because you don't use strong enough hardware or you're not very good at building you probably will damage or potentially even ruin your microphone so please just build with caution all right so let's get into this video okay so let's start off with the materials we're going to need to build this so first up this is a heavy duty shelf support so it's essentially just a piece of metal and the heavy duty comes with this extra piece of metal that's just helping to support this because obviously you're going to be putting a fairly heavy microphone on it. You know, you got some hardware and stuff and, um, you know, make sure it never breaks. And this measures about 14 inches by about 10 inches. Now for the arm that actually extends and allows you to pivot, what I initially used on mine is this. This is a one by two piece of oak. Oak is just really strong, but the problem is, is when you put a screw through the end of it, it can split depending on, you know, how well you pre-drilled it or the hole. So you can go with this option. This is actually a two by two. So that actually measures an inch and a half by an inch and a half. It's just a square piece of wood. I cut this to about 14 inches as well. And then at least when you're putting the screw through the end of this piece of wood to be able to build this whole thing, you have a lot more wood and a, a much less chance of it splitting. And then you're gonna need your telescoping boom arm. And the reason you wanna go with a telescoping boom arm over a just standard one is simply because of I'm assuming most of you guys are going to be putting this in a bedroom or something like that where the ceiling height's going to be an issue. And if you have a tall singer and you got to push the mic up really high, uh, you're going to find that that, that boom arm is going to hit the ceiling. So this way, you just eliminate that problem. And then you're going to need your European mic stand adapter. Now these stand adapters just convert 3 8 thread to 5 8 thread. 5 8 is what we would standardly use. 3 8 is apparently the standard in, in Europe, but you wanna make sure you use these. These are metal ones. There are plastic ones out there available. The metal is obviously gonna be much stronger. And we're gonna be using this stand adapter untraditionally. We're gonna be using it actually to mount the, the boom stand to the actual mic stand. And then you're gonna obviously need your mic stand shock mount or however you're mounting your microphone to your mic stand currently. And then last, we're just gonna need some hardware. Right here, this is a bolt with a wing nut preferably and two washers and this goes actually through this, um, this angle bracket into the piece of wood. So it just needs to be long enough to go through here. And then you're going to need a some sort of screw or some sort of fastener that's gonna be able to go through that European adapter and actually screw into this piece of wood. I like using these Spax construction screws just because they're really strong. I use them all the time and I think they really go through wood really nicely without splitting it. But you could also use like a heavy duty lag. You just have to make sure that when you're putting these together, this extra space that this lag is gonna take up can actually still be threaded into your mic stand, uh, shock mount, or whatever you're using to actually mount your microphone. 
Okay, so for the most part, this is what you need. You will need a couple screws to screw this bracket into your wall, but I'm not gonna get into that because depending on whether you have drywall or not, it's gonna change your fasteners. So this is what you need. Let's start putting it together. So you can find links and a list of materials you're gonna need in the description of this video. Okay, so first we're gonna need our bracket, the piece of wood, and I'm once again, I'm using the, the two by two. And we're gonna need our bolt with the two washers and the wing nut. So what I did is, um, I drilled a hole big enough to put that bolt through, and it's about three and a half inches back into the piece. And so I just drilled that hole there, nothing crazy. And then I'm gonna take my bolt, and we're gonna take one washer and the bolt, and I just, <laughs> I labeled back and front just so you guys don't get confused. So back meaning where it's gonna sit back on this bracket just like this, and then front meaning where we're gonna put the microphone mount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my, my bolt and I'm gonna push it through here. It's a good fit. As you can see, it comes through there. We're gonna put it through the hole that's on this bracket, just like that. And then we're gonna put down a washer and then our wing nut. And so that's what that connection looks like. And this allows, you know, when you when you loosen this up because you know you want to move it, you can loosen it up and then this will articulate like this. And then when you want it to stay in place, you can go ahead and just tighten it up a little bit more. And then just to be really clear, that is actually the top of the bracket and that will be the bottom. Okay, so what I've done is just articulated the arm up so I can uh, just nicely mount this European adapter onto the wood just like that. For strength, I would probably really recommend using something thick like this, like a big lag screw. Um, it will just give you the most amount of grip and it'll make it really strong. Um, just for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna use a construction screw. Now, this is still really strong. I think it's, you know, like 600 pounds or something of sheer strength. So it's, it is really strong, but either way, we need to first just find the center of this so we can, um, you know, drill our whole center. And I'm just using a, <laughs> a, a knife that was laying over here just to find the center of this. It's like that, so that's our center. I'm gonna get a, a drill bit and just pre-drill the center of it. Okay, and Get our bit. And then all we're gonna do, just put this here. And you just wanna make sure you find a, a screw or a construction screw or whatever, that when you put it in here, it's not gonna rip out. Now this is getting a little close as far as, you know, the, the size of the head of the screw compared to the, that the, the inner size of this little adapter. That's why I like this lag better. It's gonna hold a lot better. But like I said, just for the sake of this video, making it a little easier on me, I'm just gonna use this. Okay, and there we go. Now we've mounted our adapter to this piece of wood. And now we can really start by putting this whole thing on our wall um, because it'll make it a lot easier to, to mount that, that boom arm. Okay, so now we're gonna mount it on the wall. Now, because I've already built mine, I'm just showing you guys how to rebuild it. Um, I didn't wanna screw this into my, you know, beautifully finished studio. So I just, I took a piece of wood and I just literally mounted it off the wall so that I could screw this in and show you guys. But it does bring up a really good point. Um, if you have, if you're gonna be screwing this into drywall or plaster walls, you're gonna to need to get some sort of heavy duty drywall anchor um, because there is going to be a lot of pressure on the top and it's gonna to wanna to pull itself out of the wall. So just make sure whatever you buy is heavy duty enough and can support your microphone and this stand and all this stuff together. So for me, I'm just gonna screw this right into here. I've already marked where I want it. This is a, a little lower than I would put it in the actual studio just because, once again, for filming purposes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a couple screws in here. It's definitely worth putting one on the top first. 
and then I'll put one right here. Okay, so a <laughs> little wobbly once again because I'm not actually screwing this to a wall or anything. But now we have our mount and now we can go ahead and start attaching the boom mount and kind of trying to finish this thing up. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put the actual boom arm on now. I feel like it's a little easier just to be able to take this out so that you can go ahead and just thread this on much easier. Come on. There we go. It's gonna screw this in all the way, just like that. So that this thumbnail screw, if you can see it is, is down. I mean, it could be up as well, but you just wanna to try to find a spot where it's gonna sit nicely. Now you can, because this is just screwed in, you can just kind of twist this whole thing around and just really make it tight. Yeah, I like that a little better. Now it's just a little bit more rigid and strong. Then we can go ahead and put the boom arm back in like this and just kind of adjust this a little bit. So then the whole point of this is to be able to unloosen this just a little bit and then this whole thing just folds up right into the wall. And even for a person my height, I'm 5'11", you know, I can still go under this, but because of the video and the, you know, the way I was filming this, I made this lower. Mine's actually a full 12 inches higher up. So I mounted mine at 82 inches, meaning the, the bottom of this bracket right here is 82 inches. So mine is up another full foot. And then even a really tall person could walk under this and not hit their head. But then you can just move it back, tighten it up, and then now you can go ahead and adjust your mic. So now we can go ahead and put our shock mount on. Now, I just exchanged mine. This is for the Rode NT1A. I just figured probably people have that mic more. <laughs> Uh, more than the, the mic I was gonna put on. So just gonna go ahead and thread this in, make sure it's real nice and tight on there. Put this back in there. Make it like this. Now, I think that the shock mount should be actually upside down. And the reason for that is the microphone capsule will be down here. Well, actually, let me go grab a mic. So here is the Rode NT1A. So it's like this. So the reason I like it like this is because there's nothing behind it. You know, the boom arm isn't right behind the mic that, you know, potentially could have a teeny tiny little reflection, but this way there's just nothing but your actual wall. Personally, I think this is the best way to do it. Now, another thing to note is my vocal booth, what I was showing you, is actually fully acoustically treated. Everything from four inch panels all the way to 12 inch thick bass traps, there's acoustic diffusion and quadratic diffusion. So my vocal booth is really well tuned and where I put this particular stand, I don't have any reflections I have to worry about off the walls. But if you're gonna be putting this into your studio or wherever you're putting this, just really think about making sure that you acoustically treat that front wall that that microphone's gonna be right in front of. And you might not even wanna try it out like I've done and turn it 90 degrees and have the singer you know, sing 90 degrees the other way. Maybe you have a longer length room, you'll get less reflections. And, you know, it's just something to really consider when you're setting this up, trying to find a good spot in your room to put this. And then we can obviously add the pop filter for the front. And then you will have to start adjusting this, you know, to get it to be kind of the right angle that you want it at. Make sure everything's tight. And then you can go ahead and add your cable, which you can kind of snake up and over this. I just use these, these cable ties for pretty much everything, these Velcro ones. You just kind of do that. One at the back here. And then there you go. And then, you know, when you're done using this, you bend it up into the wall, you get it out of the way, and uh, it just makes it really convenient. Now, I do want to point out the importance of having the piece of wood on the bottom of the metal bracket. The reason why is 
when all this force is pushing down this way, it's all that weight is being transferred to this bolt and the fulcrum point, I think that's what it's called, is back here. So this is pushing against the metal. Now, if you were to flip this upside down, this would then pull this way and all that force would then be relying on that bolt. And if that bolt, you know, was bent way too many times, it could snap off. Now I know in the video, the stand looked like it wasn't very strong and looked kind of wobbly, but that's only because I mounted it to a kind of thin piece of wood that was just temporarily held against the wall just so I could shoot this video. But I promise you, if you use what I showed you in this video, yours is going to be as solid as mine is and it does not move at all. So I think it goes without saying, but after you're done building this, probably would be beneficial to go ahead and hit it with some spray paint. I just spray painted all the parts that I had black, but you know, paint it whatever color you want and just, you know, just make it look a little nicer. So guys, that is it. I think this is just a super useful thing that you can have, especially in the home studio world where, you know, there isn't a ton of room. You know, you wanna be able to push things out of the way, but then have them quickly set up again. And I just think this is super, super useful. And that's why I had to make a video and share this with you guys so that you can make your own and hopefully you guys like this as much as I do. So if you guys do like this, you like these type of build videos, please go ahead and leave me a comment. Now, if you guys do get stuck on something or you're having trouble maybe finding a particular part or whatever, go ahead and find me on Instagram. It is probably the easiest way to share photos and me to really just respond back and forth to people. I respond back to every single person who messages me. So it's just, my, it's my favorite way to go ahead and interact with you guys. I also think it's really easy to send pictures back and forth and I don't have to physically type things. You can just do voice memos back and forth and I just, I find it the easiest way to help you guys out. So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching these videos and supporting the True Sound Studios YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and find me on, on Instagram if you guys wanna talk even further about this stuff. But if not, I will see you guys in the next video. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.